Um, this is water investigations and the first thing that it strikes you, you might have noticed me carrying it from there, it was heavier than most of the other boxes that I've lifted. And that's great because all that tells you there's a load of stuff in it. And this is again another advantage of a kit club, it's, you know, you might have three hand lenses in your science cupboard, um, you'll get 10 or 15 when you borrow a box from the kit club. This has got, um, well what hasn't it got? This has got beakers and cups. It's got night light holders. Have you seen these? I'm going to do a little demo with these because this is, again, um, from a safety point of view, it's absolutely brilliant to be able to work with these. Um, and that relates to that. Um, what did we start with? Yeah, look at this. Um, more thermometers here than I can imagine. Hopefully, glass, hopefully not the old mercury ones. Um, and really nice. You know, what's the warmest part of our school? Let's go and find out. We can put it over here, we could put it in a different part, we could put it on the floor compared with the ceiling, in the draft of a door, in the draft of a window, um, sunny side of the classroom, non-sunny side of the classroom, outside, inside, um, under bushes, on top of bushes. Whole, just wherever you want to measure temperature, you can put that giant thermometer and it's easy for them to read. Um, for those who are more able and or at least good at reading um, things, then you've got um, heaps, as I say, of thermometers that they can do their own investigations. It can be around an environment, but it can also be in terms of working with the range of resources that they provide you with. Again, loads of beakers, and we want to measure temperature of water, perhaps. Okay, so we've got some water here. Okay, so because at this point, I'm obviously going to read the thermometer. So there we go, I'm going to measure the temperature of those two batches of water and time how long it takes to cool. Um, so we can obviously. It's entitled Water Investigations, and we can um, place two thermometers in water of um, different temperatures, but with the same volume, and then we could compare um, the cooling rate. We would be making the assumption, um, you said about volume of water, which you are perfectly correct. I've just noticed that beaker is a different style to that one as well. So if you did want to do that investigation, you would ideally want matching beakers as well to be sure that the insulation around the edges was the same. You've got surface area as well. You've got surface area and volume, yeah. But that is pushing it in terms of the yeah. primary maths curriculum, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, but again, it's bringing maths into science or bringing science into maths. You can also bring optics into water as well. You can. If you look through that, it's like has a lens. Shining light through it. Yeah. yeah. And, and then they can think about their real life experiences. Who's driven past a field where they're water spraying, particularly at the moment in my area, a lot of potato fields, very dry, and the sun just catches the water. Um, I and think the thermometer bent in the water. Why does the thermometer bend in the water? Exactly. Refraction. Again, probably key stage three. But there is nothing to stop. As far as I know, Claire, we're, we're talking today of a primary kit club. Um, but I think... The majority of the kits are for primary use. But, but they can go into secondaries if secondaries take want it. Yeah, take the smart materials kit into primary and thought, oh, OK, but actually the nappy thing that you mentioned goes down really well. So if you feel comfortable using them, you know, use them, that, you know, whatever you think is useful in your lesson. Yeah, and the nappy thing is a great one for um, thinking about a method to actually test the absorbency of nappies. I didn't do the nappy story with you. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, 
but again you're, you're interested in how absorbent are the different materials that sit in the base of a nappy um, and then of course nowadays with um, sustainability then you can bring in lots of other dimensions to that you can get into the questions of um, design so you could do a whole package on it it could become a, a, a class project design the ultimate nappy What's it got to be? You know, we're, we're thinking price, we're talking environmental impact, we're thinking convenience, we're thinking um, we don't want all that rubbish in landfill. Combine all those and you've got a massive challenge that's going to be entirely cross-curricular. Um, so obviously, different water is different temperatures. Um, Claire, could you go and get me um, the two bowls of the, what might be very cold or might be iced water? Um, from the, in the in my secret hideaway exactly so these are these are the really great um, nightlight holders and I say they're really great because some of you might be slightly concerned oh brilliant it's frozen oh that's excellent um, you might be concerned about um, burning nightlights in the classroom if you borrow this kit you couldn't do it physically any safer Okay, so you've got um, a tray here. I've put a little bit of sand, which is provided in the bottom, and you stand your nightlight holder in the, sta in the sand like that. You have a nightlight. Okay, so we've got the nightlight there, and then um, this is, I mean, they put um, the kit. Kit Club provides these little um, containers, but they're just um, cake cases. Um, I am in the habit, I cannot eat um, a Batewell tart or whatever, um, I can't think of the brand, others are available. Kipling. Mr Kipling, thank you. Um, I can't eat any of those products without retaining these these days. You're probably the same as teachers, you've probably got your own supply of them. Um, so we can plot that on there. And as I say, we're doing water investigations. So how long does it take to melt a piece of ice? Or what, what properties do we need to melt a piece of ice? Maybe this piece of ice held in my hand might work quicker than that nightlight. Compare, find out what temperature is my hands at. We could measure my hand temperature using the um, thermometers. We probably can't put um, the thermometer into that, but I can demonstrate that it has already melted. So the temperature from the night light is greater than the temperature from my hand. Um, so yeah, we can measure, do water investigations, we can do heating, we can do cooling. And as Janine was kind enough to um, donate this to me, uh, I don't think we provide a knife, so... There we go. I doubt anyone's going to want that piece of chocolate afterwards. But, um, and again, using this exactly the same setup, you can think about um, irreversible and reversible changes. Because um, with the water, we... We can melt that, it'll happen. And again, what effect? Shaking it and putting it in your hand and shaking it. Well, does that make it go any quicker? Maybe it does. Again, you need similar size pieces, but once it's, um, once it's dissolved um, or melted, which is the correct word? Melted, thank you. Um, once it's melted, you can refreeze it. So you take everything back to the freezer and it's, so the change with water um, is a reversible change, whereas the change with chocolate is quite an interesting <laughs> one. You can melt it and solidify it, but that piece of chocolate is not going to look the same as that piece of chocolate. So this gets slightly tricky in the primary curriculum because then you're saying that it's not exactly a reversible change, but it's not exactly a non-reversible change. And I know as teachers, you know, we talked about teacher confidence this morning. Um, it's those grey areas which you kind of, oh, just step back from, I'll just avoid it, better not go there. Um, but again, there's no right, right or wrong answer. You know, the child is going to discover ultimately that there are 
they're told things in science, even at GCSE, that is really half the story. And by the time they get to A level, they get a bit more of the story, which generally debunks what they learned for GCSE. So there isn't too much harm, as long as you're not too concerned about your SATs results, in letting them explore it. But once again, in using this box, we've introduced heaps of new language. We've used heaps of new equipment. It's become very practical. It's become very hands-on. Um, and a big language element has been um, contributed to it. And that is starting to melt because that's now stuck to the, um, the bottom of that. And um, there's balloons in here, lots of consumable items, the sand for safety, but you can also, you know, you could bury some metal, tiny metal objects in the sand, provide a magnet, and then you can look at magnetism as well, and use magnetism as a way of separating materials. Um, and this need to separate things, again, we come back to recycling. Again, it'll probably be different in your region than mine, probably even different on different postcodes in the Tyne and Weir area. But how does recycling plants work? How do they separate metal from glass, from paper? Um, so again, it'll be applying science knowledge and applying the different properties of materials which you can investigate, whether it's their reaction to water, heat, etc., etc.